Hello everyone and welcome to a new Minecraft modding tutorial. Uh, today we are going to be looking at Minecraft 1.16.1. So I know I haven't updated any of my mods yet and uh, the reasoning behind that is actually it has to do with MCP. Uh, the mappings have not been updated. Forge is working on something. I haven't been following it that closely. So, I don't know. I'm waiting for those unmapped functions to get mapped so it's not an absolute nightmare porting like tens of thousands of lines of code. But uh, we can go ahead and start uh, dipping our feet into this tutorial. It shouldn't be uh, too difficult to deal with. It's uh, mostly stuff like GUIs that have issues right now, so uh won't be getting into that right now. So before we get started, uh, setting up is pretty much the same as it was before. So if you watch my 1.13, 1.14 series, it should be about the same, at least at first. Uh, the code is, it can be the same. Uh, we're actually going to be doing things in, we're going to be taking advantage of a couple of newer things. So if you have a mod that's already working in 1.14 or 1.15, odds are porting it to 1.16 would be pretty easy. Uh, but we're actually going to get into data generators this time. Uh, so we're not going to be writing tons of JSON files by hand. We're going to be generating them. And we're going to be using the deferred register to register our blocks and items and so on. So... Um, We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, for now, let's just cover the basics. So before you start modding, uh, you're going to want to make sure you have a JDK installed. That's a Java development kit. Minecraft currently runs Java 8, so I use a, a Java 8 JDK. That's what I recommend. Uh, I think newer versions will work as well, but I'm using Java, uh, Java 8. Second, you want some kind of editor to actually edit code files with. Uh, I recommend using an integrated development environment like IntelliJ Ideal or Eclipse. Uh, we're using IntelliJ Ideal. That's my preference. I've used both IntelliJ and Eclipse for several years. Uh, they're both very capable uh, IDEs. Uh, I just prefer IntelliJ. And uh, finally, after you've gotten all of that squared away, you're going to want to go to files.minecraftforge.net and uh, download an MDK for the version you want to develop for. Okay, so I've got a folder here prepared to extract all these files into. All right. And we can close that. Uh, do we need to make any changes here? No, I don't think we really need to make any changes there for now. Uh, we can delete these files here. Credits, license, readme. We don't need those. Uh, ideally, you'll want to make your own readme file, uh, your own change log, and so on. Uh, actually, I think there is like a small issue, or there used to be, in the build.gradle here. So let me just take a quick look at this. Yeah, there is actually a small couple of issues here we're going to have to fix. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, set our group here. So typically this will be something, it's kind of like a URL backwards. So I use net. Silent Chaos 512, and our mod is just going to be called Tutorial. That'll be our mod ID as well. So let's just go ahead and go through, and there should be a few places where it says Example Mod, like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just select all of those, and replace that with Tutorial. And here's another one. Uh, I don't think these actually matter. I'll just leave those for now. Okay. 
Okay, so yeah, change the mod ID here in the run configs. And our data config, we actually want to do something here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Copy this from another project. Okay. Okay, and uh, I just added a couple, uh, basically these two lines here where we're saying uh, existing folders to look for stuff in in our data generators. We'll need that later. Okay, so we should be ready to import our project. I'm going to import the build.gradle file and open this project. And we're going to let that do its thing. So that's going to begin importing some stuff, downloading some files. In the meantime, I'm going to go here under Source Main Resources Meta Inf Mods.toml, and there's a couple things we can change in here. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to go ahead and comment out the issue tracker there. Our mod ID needs to be updated to whatever our mod ID is going to be. Uh, not going to use an update JSON. Comment that out for now. Uh, comment out the logo for now. And everything else here should be. Oh, need to change this to tutorial. And in IntelliJ, uh, what I just did there is I press Alt J. And that'll select the next occurrence of whatever I selected. It's very useful for editing multiple things at once, just like that. Okay, and I think that's all we really need to do. So at this point, uh, just got to wait for Forge to do its thing. Okay, uh, while this is going, we can go ahead and take a look at this file here. So we need to change this to match our mod ID here. And we'll need to move this to the correct package. So the same as the group in the build.gradle. And we'll need to update the folder structure there in just a moment. Okay, uh, it's indexing, so we're almost done there. Okay, it uh, looks like we're good, but I'll go ahead and uh, hit refresh one more time. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this. So... I want to move to that package, so that should go ahead and update our stuff for us. We can delete this. Okay, so let's go ahead and try running it. So I'm going to come up to this Gradle sidebar here. I'm going to expand a project, go under Task, FG Runs, and we're going to Run Client. And if all the values we changed are correct, it should load up a version of Minecraft that has our mod which does nothing in it installed. Uh, of course it's got to download assets first. Man, it's going to take, <laughs> take a while to get used to the red there. That is... Uh... Okay, create a world. Not that there's going to be anything for us to look at, really. 
So we can actually come in here and see our tutorial mod is in here, and it's got some data that was in the mods.toml, which probably have to update later. So, okay, that's a basic setup, so... I guess now we can get to coding. So we've got some stuff in this example mod class here. So you could see that there's this, uh, at the bottom, there's registry events. And this is how we registered things in the past. So, for example, down here, you could take that event, get the registry, and register a block on that. We're not going to use this. We're going to be doing something a little different. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new package. I'm going to call this setup. And we're going to create a class called registration. And in here, let's go ahead and get like something to register blocks and items. So I mentioned we're going to be using deferred register now. So we're going to make a deferred register of blocks. And we'll just call this blocks. And we call deferred register dot create. And now this needs a forge registry. So we're going to give that forge registries dot blocks. And we're going to need a mod ID. And I normally store this like as a constant in my main mod class. So like that, and I actually need to format this file. And we can go ahead and change this to, I didn't rename example mod. Let's go ahead and rename this class as well to tutorial mod. So now we can say tutorial mod mod ID. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing for items. All right. So now we actually need to do something with those. So I'm going to go ahead and create a method called register. And in here, we need to take our deferred registers and call this register event bus method. And for this, we're going to give it fml java mod loading context dot get dot get mod event bus. And we can go ahead and just extract that to a local variable, kind of make it a little bit easier to read if you want to. And do the same thing for our items. Okay, now we need to go back to tutorial mod, and I am going to, you know, I still I still don't know, like, what are these events I'm going to keep. I'm just going to leave that junk there for right now. So we are going to call right here in our mods constructor, we're going to call registration dot register. All right. So now let's go ahead and uh, create an item. So I'm going to go ahead and create another new class in that setup package and call it mod items. There's any number of ways that you could do this. I normally have separate classes for different registry things like mod items, mod blocks. Technically, you could just do all of this in your main mod class if you wanted to, but it's good to have things separated. Okay, so what do we want to add? to our mod. I haven't really thought this far ahead. How about we do silver? So we'll have a silver ingot, silver ore, all that good stuff. So let's say we want to make our silver ingot. So we can make this public, static, and final. And the final is part of why I like doing the deferred register. We can make stuff final. Some of the methods I've used in the past, you can't, so there's no guarantee that some mod couldn't tamper with it. 
Which, I mean, what are the odds of that? But still, it kind of bugs me. It's nice to have things final. Okay, so we just need a standard item, and this could be any class that extends item. Uh, actually, not deferred register. Registry object is what we're creating. And this will be our silver ingot. And for this, we're going to call registration.items.register. And we need to give it a name, so silver underscore ingot. Our name needs to be all lowercase letters and underscores, and I think uh, numbers are valid too. I think also dots and slashes are valid, but technically, or typically you just see letters and underscores. So no capital letters. And now we need a supplier of an item. So let's go ahead and make a supplier. So we are going to create a new item, and this takes an item.properties object. And this, you can, it's kind of like a builder object. You can chain these different method calls on it. Uh, we'll probably want to set a group on it. Uh, typically, that's the only thing that you'll put onto your properties is a group. So for now, we'll just go ahead and create or like use a vanilla item group, I guess. Uh, put it in materials. You can create your own item groups and that'll be a, a tab in your creative menu. And uh, that's all we need to do there. We do need to actually add a single method here called static void register. And that won't have anything in it. We just need to call something to class load it. So back here in registration, register, we're going to call mod items register. And we're going to do that for basically every one of these registry object holder classes we create. Okay, so with everything we've done now, we should be registering our silver ingot. It won't have a model or a texture. Uh, we'll have to get that. We'll have to come back to that later. Okay, let's go ahead and load up our world and see if our item is indeed there. Okay, and then if we look under uh, what tab is materials. miscellaneous right okay so yep there's our silver ingot it doesn't have a model it doesn't have a texture it doesn't even have a, a name proper name uh, we could fix that pretty easily okay so uh, if you look under your resources folder here uh, there is not a lang file we gotta create that. Okay, so let's create a folder called assets under resources. And then one under that called tutorial. Let me actually check to make sure I've got that right. Assets, tutorial, then lang. Then lang. And then we create en underscore us dot json and then we put that unlocalized key that we saw for and then map that to the actual name of the item like that and that's pretty much all there is to a lang file so that will next time we load the game it'll fix the name of the item Okay, and finally, let's take a quick look at blocks, because blocks are a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to create a mod blocks class. And go ahead and make that register method, same as with the items. Okay. 
Okay, so blocks are a bit more complex than items because blocks also need to have items associated with them. Uh, if you are walking on dirt in the world, that's a block. If you mine that dirt and get it in your inventory, that's an item, not a block. It's a block item, if you will. So if we want our blocks to be mineable in such a way that they drop themselves and the player can pick them up and use them for whatever, then they need an item as well. But there are actually cases where blocks do not have items. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is write a couple of helper methods here. So this is going to be a generic method. Uh, it's going to take one type parameter t, which extends block, and that is net.minecraft.block. And this is going to return a registry object of t, so a registry object of whatever our block type is. And we're going to call this register no item. We'll take two parameters, our string name and our supplier of t block. Or block supplier, if you will. So all we're going to do here is we're going to return registration dot blocks dot register name block. Okay, so let's create another method. It's going to have a very similar signature. We're going to just call this one register string name supplier of t block. Okay, so for this one, we're going to say registry object of t, and this is what we're going to return. So I typically follow a convention of just calling it ret if it's the value I intend to return. We're going to call register no item name block. So that will register the block. Now we need to make an item. So we're going to call registration.items.register. And we're going to give it the same name. And we're going to supply a new block item. And this takes a block. So we're going to say ret.get and an item properties. We're going to put that in, uh, let's put it in the building blocks group. So what we're doing at this point, uh, return ret, is pretty simple. Uh, we're creating the same type of block item for every block that we're registering here. You may need to create an additional method to supply different types of block items if you need to. In most cases, though, a standard block item is good enough. So let's go ahead and create, uh, let's do an or, an or block. So registry object of block, silver or, and we'll call register silver or, and we're going to supply that with a new block. And this takes a block properties, so we're going to say block.properties. No. Wait, is that? <laughs> did that change in 1.16? I guess it did. Okay, apparently it's an abstract block now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that kind of threw me for a loop, but all right. Uh, so we're going to want a material, and since this is an ore, we'll say rock. Okay, and we can also optionally pass a dye color or material color, which I don't think we need. Okay, and same as with the item properties, we can, we've got some method calls here. And uh, yeah, these are the unmapped methods I was talking about, the these mystery functions here.
that don't have a name, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and call hardness and resistance. And uh, I don't know what's typical for ores. Uh, we'll do 310 for now. Uh, you could set a harvest level, harvest tool. Harvest level, uh, we'll say two, I guess. Uh, sound, sound type, thought. Ooh, a lot of new sound types. Must be like the new netter rack, or the new netter sounds. And anything else here that we want? No, I think that's it. Jump factor. I don't know what jump factor is. Okay, finding new things as we go, but... <laughs> okay, so we got our new block here. And uh, let's go ahead and do like a storage block as well. I'll just go ahead and copy that. Change that to from ore to block. And the material will be iron and the sound type will be metal. And typically blocks don't have a harvest level set on them. You can if you want to, but not necessary. Okay, so that should register our blocks. Again, they won't have any models, so uh, they'll just look like the fuchsia and black checkerboards, but they'll be there. All right, so let's take a look. Under building blocks, we've got a couple of new blocks here. We should be able to place these. All right, you can tell they make different sounds. So they got the sound types. Uh, they don't have any models, of course. Uh, wait, we've got the game mode switcher now in 1.16.1, don't we? How do you use that? Right, it's you hold F3 and press F4. Okay. Still better than typing commands. Alright, so that's our ore, which was supposed to be harvest level 2. Okay, uh, yeah, we don't have loot tables for them, so <laughs> that would explain why they break. So yeah, we gotta generate loot tables before our blocks can actually function correctly. So that means we're gonna have to get into data generators, which I'm not going to do in this video. We'll do that next time. So I think we got a lot done still. We uh, covered deferred register and how to register blocks and items, and uh, that extends to all the other types of registries, of which there are a handful, as you can see. So if you want to register something, you can do it the exact same way. Alright, so I'm going to cut this here. Next time we'll start uh, delving into data generators, so we can actually see our blocks and break them. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.